So, hello everyone. Hi, hello and welcome. I think I finally got it to work. I had some technical problems. Uh, so welcome again to the Saturday live stream, to the Saturday microscopy live stream. I hope uh, that uh, you're all able to hear me now. Um, yeah, um, basically today, uh, hoping that uh, everything works out uh, with, uh, with uh, my webcams because my webcams had some problem. Um, problems. I uh, hope uh, that uh, it's going to be again an interesting uh, live stream, an interesting evening uh, today. Um, what I've uh, got here is uh, right now I've uh, got um, a few salt uh, crystals uh, under my stereo microscope and uh, I see that uh, you're able to hear me. Okay, that's great. <laughs> and um, today I would like to do a little bit of um, yeah, po polarized uh, stereo microscopy with the polarized light. Um, yeah, so um, normally uh, polarized light microscopy is nothing new. I've been uh, doing videos on that already before, but uh, I've always used a compound microscope for that. Um, and uh, today I'd like uh, to try a little bit of polarized light microscopy using my stereo microscope, um, because that's something I've not uh, experimented around um, a lot with. And uh, I see that uh, people now have already started to write comments, <laughs> so the community is very active. And uh, usually at the, yeah, well, I've already wasted five minutes at the beginning because of uh, my webcams didn't work. Um, but um, usually I read out uh, the greetings from all over the world first, uh, then I jump into a little bit of theory and I'm going, going to show you a couple of the things that are prepared for today. Okay, so yeah, people are all already chatting with the, um, each other. Um, yeah, there is a hello from all over the world. I'm not going to read out every comment uh, right now. Um, and I see that... Um, uh, some people are already reposting requests. Uh, so Gloria, for example, is requesting um, uh, something here. Okay, there is also uh, from Buenos Aires, from Vietnam. Okay, uh, greetings from Hungary, from California. Um, yeah, so some people are doing some uh, microscopy work. Um, it, I do read uh, the chat because some people um, some people do post questions and if you're new to the live stream the rules are as follows so you can ask any type of question even if they're off topic as long as they are microscopy related okay I will try to answer them in any case um, and uh, yeah uh, because you guys have been already waiting for quite some time I want to quickly give you a little bit of an overview of what we'll be doing today and I will be showing you now the desk uh, my desk view again hoping that everything works okay here we are very good. So, um, some of you might already know this, uh, but uh, for those of you who don't, uh, I'm going to give you a quick, uh, a quick explanation of uh, what polarized light microscopy is and how you can try this um, um, out uh, yourself. Okay. Um, so, what I've got here is, is um, you, um, yeah, the following. Um, this is a so-called a, a polarization filter. Um, I got this uh, from uh, um, an old camera, but these days what you probably want to use is the following. You can buy um, those uh, polarization filters here. It is a plastic protective foil on, on here. Yeah. And basically they also work, uh, they can be bought over Amazon. They're not so expensive. Um, yeah, you can also use uh, those filters here. Um, and uh, what they do is the following. If you have a bright background, um, I don't, yeah. And uh, yeah, you're going to see here, my finger here. And if you put the other one on, on top of it and even start to rotate it, okay, then you're going to see that, um, yeah, in a certain position, it's going to be completely black, like for example, right now. And if you rotate it again, then it's going to become transparent again, okay? Um, and uh, what happens is, is that uh, when we place a sample between those uh, two polarizing filters, then some of uh, the samples will start to shine up and light up and it looks uh, quite nice. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to put uh, a f filter on, on the bottom there with light from the bottom. Then we need to put a slide on top, like I've got some prepared slides here. Um, and then we need to put another one um, yeah, over the top here. And uh, usually with compound microscopes, uh, um, there is not a lot of space between the objective um, and uh, yeah, the filter. And therefore there's not much space, but uh, that's why I'll be using a stereo microscope today to show you a little bit uh, that this is also possible. If you have not uh, guessed already um, over the last couple of live streams, I've also been using stereo microscopes uh, quite a bit. The reason is, is I want to make them also more popular. Uh, yeah, stereo microscopy is also quite, uh, quite nice. Okay, so this is basically something that I want to do. And um, over here now, if I switch over to the stereoscope view, okay, um, sometimes it does take a little bit of time 
um, yeah, for it to appear. Yeah, then uh, what you see over here, let me turn this off down a little bit so that you see it a little bit better in the corner. Um, yeah, there is light uh, coming from the bottom. Then I pu put a little bit of a, a, a spacer um, here. It's not really absolutely not. Yeah, so it's basically possible for me to move this around more easily. It's not absolutely necessary. Um, but uh, what you need is you need some kind of a polarization filter. And you put the specimen on top. I mean, I can also move it around like this maybe. Yeah. And I have to put uh, another filter on top here. And I will turn on the light now. Okay. And uh, when you put the other filter on top, you have to rotate it in such a way. Let me focus it first. Okay. These are now salt grains. Okay. And uh, when, now it's in focus. And then I turn the tr top filter until the background uh, becomes dark. Okay. The background should become dark um, like this. Um, and uh, then, yeah, you have uh, the nice, uh, nicest contrast. Okay. Um, and this is kind of uh, the idea because uh, what the salt grains do is, is they depolarize the light again. And uh, this uh, causes uh, then the depolarized light to pass uh, through the top filter. Now the filters, they have a name. I mean, there's a little bit of stray light now going on here, or maybe I have to turn it up a little bit more. Maybe the camera is a little bit, uh, yeah. So here we go. Okay, um, and uh, basically the, the bottom filter is called the polarizer and the top filter is called the analyzer. And uh, my camera here is set to um, auto exposure and this uh, basically means it takes always a couple of seconds for the exposure to, to kind of adjust um, a little bit. Okay, and uh, today I want to put a few samples um, under the microscope and uh, I would like uh, to also show you how to grow a few crystals uh, under the microscope. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to go back. Uh, wow, the, the community is really active again. I hope I'm not uh, um, overlooking any um, important comments. Okay, so there is lots of chatting going on within the community. Okay, and uh, I will skip ahead. Yeah. Um, so there is already a comment from Hadrian. I'm curious where to put the, put the upper polarization filter. Um, what I usually do is the following. If you um, you're over here, yeah, um, it's kind of clear. I just uh, place it uh, over the Petri dish that I have. Um, but what is, uh, you can also do the following. If uh, you use a thin filter like this, and if you use the four times or maximum the 10 times uh, microscope objective in your compound microscope, then there is still enough space. Okay, so that is possible um, to, to uh, place uh, the filter between the objective and uh, the specimen slide. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is, uh, was a short, uh, yeah, um, I would also like a live stream about how the microscope actually works. You know, the way the light is reflected and how the microscope magnifies the image for you. That is a lot of physics then. I mean, but I can think about something like this as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm trying to learn, they can be found in broken LCD screens. Yes, that's correct. Um, what elements is the polarized filter? Um, I don't know, but I mean, it's it's a plastic filter, but how it's actually made, the polarized filter, I don't know. Okay, uh, uh, but uh, essentially, um, yeah, it is a commercially prepared uh, filter, and uh, they are quite uh, quite common. Okay. So um, what I want to do now is the following. I would like to show you now um, a couple of nice pictures of, of a couple of crystals that are made uh, because this is actually the, the specimens that um, are very suitable for polarized light microscopy because they look very beautiful. Okay, And uh, I would like to sh uh, show you how I've made those. And uh, it, uh, I've prepared uh, some slides here. I'm going to switch over again to the desk view um, with vitamin C. Okay, um, and um, if you look uh, here, you see that there's this white thing um, on, on the slide. This is vitamin C. How does this um, actually work? Um, and uh, it's, it's like this. I bought myself some time ago uh, pure vitamin C powder. Okay, and uh, this is, I bought this in a drugstore. So these are, um, is, uh, when I say pure, it means uh, it's not pressed in tablets, but it's in a pure crystalline form. So it looks like sugar or salt. And uh, yeah, you don't want to eat it directly because you don't know the amount that you should take. Um, yeah. So, but it's uh, very good for um, for actually for doing some microscopy and crystallization work because uh, there are no any there are no additives in here that might actually disturb the crystallization. What I've done is I've taken a little bit of this vitamin C powder 
and um, I um, basically put it uh, in, into a little bit of water um, and uh, then I placed the water on the microscope slide and I allowed it to dry. Now because uh, yeah, it's a little bit moist where I'm and humid where I'm living right now, um, it took uh, quite a bit of time for it to dry so I've done this uh, essentially for you. Um, but later on um, I will be um, putting some, some aspirin and um, some, some, some caffeine um, also under the microscope using some alcohol um, and then this uh, dries uh, much uh, faster. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how vitamin C looks like under the microscope and uh, for this I'm going to again switch over to the stereo view and uh, sometimes my camera uh, will not turn on so I have to manually switch it on and off and then I hope that this works again. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> um, and um, I will now remove uh, the, the salt here. I'll put the um, vitamin C slide um, on top here. I have to refocus again a little bit. I'm going always out of the, yeah, so I have to lower it a little bit. So here we go. Yeah, and you see that uh, yeah, it does not look very, um, it does not look very exciting yet. Okay. Um, I turn up the light a little bit more, okay, and uh, then I place uh, the second filter um, over it, and then I start to turn it until the background uh, turns black. Just drop it on here, but I have to refocus again a little bit, okay, um, until I get a reasonably clear and crisp image. And then what you're able to see is you're able to see pr pre pretty beautiful colors, okay. Um, now, um, yeah. Um, it's uh, that's one of the the first uh, it's a classic so to say vitamin C because uh, the the colors that are, are created and the patterns that are created look uh, quite a bit like modern art very beautiful and uh, considering the fact that uh, it's so easy to make uh, <laughs> yeah I r highly recommend that this uh, be one of the first things that you try out uh, and uh, still the colors do look a little bit dull so what you can do is of course you can do a little bit of, of contrast enhancement um, and then uh, you, the colors look much nicer okay so um, I would just want to show you now um, how um, those colors look like uh, when you actually do a little bit of contrast enhancement and just before the live stream what I have done is, is I actually took a few pictures and I did a little bit of a, co a contrast improvement so I just want to show this to you here this is a uh, yeah I think it's even from the same slide that it took. You know, it looks uh, quite nice. Here, that's another one. Yeah, another one here. Yeah, it looks. It does look like modern art. And uh, yeah, this is a little bit blurry. I got the focus a little bit wrong here. Yeah, and this one here over here as uh, as well. Okay, so um, basically, uh, yeah, looks. Uh, I I think it looks uh, looks uh, quite nice, and uh, uh, that's. Again, I have to wait until the camera switches on. Uh, as you see that uh, the colors here are a little bit dull um, also because of my room light is on. So there is a little bit of stray light um, going on. But um, the reason why I wanted to show it to you because most people when they, or not most people, a lot of people when they do polarized work, uh, they actually use a compound microscope. Um, but uh, with stereo microscopes, it also works uh, quite well. Yeah, you can also zoom in and zoom out with this one over here. Yeah. You, you get the idea. Yeah? So uh, I will always interrupt myself again to read a couple of comments here. Okay, um, yeah. Some people are talking about tardigrades here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, so the lights coming from objects are in different plane and that's why the background is black. Well, it's, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's essentially like this, that uh, when the, um, yeah, let's use this here again. I'm going to use this here again as an example. Um, when um, light passes uh, through a polarization filter, then um, light, uh, let, let me hold it like this, um, yeah, the light uh, passing, uh, going in, let's say the light comes here from, from the side, um, uh, basically the, 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 the waves uh, go in different planes, but the filter only allows the light uh, to go through in one plane. Yeah? Um, so let's say that uh, it's oriented vertically, this means only light uh, going out, um, out vertically um, is, is, is able to pass uh, through and then now we, if you have another filter on the other side where it's uh, turned 90 degrees yeah, uh, then this uh, light um, is not able to go through right and then um, it, it's black yeah. um, so if it's basically what you call it in a, in a so-called in a crossed uh, uh, position then it blocks um, all of the light and uh, no light is able to go through but if there's a specimen in between then this specimen might actually turn the light again so that some light is able to go through again 
Yeah. So um, this is um, is uh, basically the principle. And um, what I would like to do today is, is I would like to also show you some some commercially made slides uh, because I found out that uh, they are also quite interesting on, on the polarized light. Okay. Um, yeah, so if someone is using a stereo microscope with a bar low, they can also put a sheet of polarizer between the lens and the bar low. Uh, they can, uh, then you can use bigger specimens as well, like insects. Yeah, so the, uh, the question was the following right now. Um, is it possible, I just wanted to go back again to the desk view, I have over here a so-called bar low lens. And those bar low lenses, uh, they can be attached. Uh, beneath uh, the stereo microscope so the suggestion is is is, is not possible is it not possible also to place um, a polarization filter here uh, between the bar low and uh, the objective lens and in principle this is uh, possible um, you always have to be careful however if you have any optical systems or any optics uh, between uh, because it could be that those optics uh, also start to a little bit depolarize the light especially if there are certain stains, uh, not stains, strains, tensions in the optics, then these uh, tensions can depolarize the light. Yeah? So it's something that you might want to try out in any case, uh, but the advantage then is, is of course that uh, you have uh, yeah, essentially a, a filter, polarization filter, which is out of the way and is not uh, really um, yeah, uh, dis disturbing uh, the sample because it's further away. So that is actually a, a possibility. Yeah? So, um, so let me go through the comments again. Okay, a lot of uh, comments in the community. Um, yeah. So, yep, yep. Um, I have to see. I hope I'm not overlooking anything here. I'm just looking. If you have a question, maybe you can make it easier for me. Um, my suggestion is, is uh, and some people have already been doing that, if you have a question for me or comment for me that you want me to talk about, maybe you can make an at microbe hunter um, in front of your response because then um, it's easier for me to find uh, th those lines which are actually directly directed to me. Some of you have already been doing that. I consider this quite, uh, quite helpful because otherwise um, um, I have to go through every line and this uh, takes a little bit more time. Okay, so uh, what I would like to do now is, is I'm going to sh first show you a couple of prepared slides um, under the stereo, um, under polarized light, and then I would like to make a little bit, uh, yeah, some um, some of the, the crystals myself. And I've got also some dust here because dust fibers um, and a potato as well, and they also look uh, kind of nice. So, so let's go back again to the stereo uh, view, and uh, let's uh, see how this works. Where is, yeah, here we go again. So I'm going to remove this. Okay, and what I have here is is I have a, a so-called a dog flea. So that's actually one of my favorite uh, specimens that I have, and uh, it's, it's not very. Uh, and this is just basically yeah how it looks like. Yeah. And uh, that is uh, from a commercially prepared uh, slide. So I'm going to put the the other polarization filter on um, over it. You see that this uh, changes the the focus a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to now rotate it until the background is black. I have to do this here, um, and now it's black, and the camera will um, also kind of try to adjust it a little bit. And um, one of the things, let me go in further a little bit and further and further, and I need to focus. And uh, yeah, it looks a little bit interesting because there are some parts that are brighter than other parts. And when I checked this out uh, today in the afternoon, because I was looking for some samples, I was really happy. And I need to explain this a little bit because <laughs> uh, I'm going to show you an arrow over here because what you're able to see here, all of those bright things here that you see, these are muscles. That's, that's uh, I really like this, uh, okay? So these are muscles that are attached in inside uh, the exoskeleton of the dog flea. 
and uh, you do not see it here quite well but actually when you look through the microscope itself you actually see it, uh, yeah, the individual muscle fibers uh, much better and uh, the question is, is now why are they um, yeah why do they actually turn around the polarized light and I think the reason is is because those uh, muscle fibers what they have is they have uh, protein filaments so called actin and myosin which are aligned um, yeah there are many of these fibers uh, in parallel um, and I think because of this regular arrangement it's almost like in a crystalline structure right because of this regular arrangement um, it um, it influences the way that the light res uh, the, 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 um, the polarized light uh, yeah, responds so I, I kind of like this that uh, yeah we were able to to actually see um, yeah the individual muscle fibers this way and um, because the other parts of the um, the dog flea yeah, the abdomen for example here yeah is pretty dark yeah. But there where you see, uh, here um, also you can also see it uh, quite nicely, you can see the individual horizontal lines here, uh, the individual muscles um, yeah, of the dog flea. Yeah. So um, um, I, 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 really like, uh, I, I really like this, uh, this uh, was a little bit of a surprise to me myself. Um, that uh, yeah, using polarized light, you're able you're able to see that uh, this well, and I think again that this has to do something with the the, the regular arrangement um, of uh, yeah, of the muscle fibers. Yeah, um, not the muscle fibers, the the actin and the myosin protein filaments inside the muscles. Yeah, so. Um, Sand grains will also be very nice sample. Oh, yeah. I've got I've got a whole bunch of sand grains in my cellar. I forgot them. Yeah. Um, would these polarized lens be good for mineral specimens? Yes, uh, minerals um, are uh, uh, often crystalline and, and therefore, um, of course, uh, they might be optically active and therefore, um, as a matter of fact, that's why you have so-called uh, um, yeah, those polarization microscopes which are used by mineralogists to actually observe minerals and, and crystals. Yeah? When another question here, when smaller samples like crystals or salt are examined under light microscopy, the polarizer and analyzer will be required in order to see polarizing effect. Yes, um, yeah. Be careful here. I need to uh, um, just uh, um, yes. The two aspects here. Uh, so the question again is: is when when you look at uh, crystals or salt um, under light microscope, do you need a polarizer and analyzer? And the, answer, the short answer is, is yes. If you want to get get the nice effect here. Um, however, not all salt or not all crystals are actually also optically active. Okay, so it could be that some uh, crystals um, are um, essentially no, um, they will not give you colors. I mean, the salt crystals, for example, these appear white on a dark background. But uh, if you, for example, use vitamin C because um, it is uh, yeah, an irregularly shaped crystal, there is it's called in stereochemistry. It has those so-called, if you're in the chemistry, so chiral C atoms, which are basically an Im image and mirror image, and therefore you have a a rotation of the polarized light, and this gives it the, the colors, right? So I just want to say that not all crystals are equally producing equally good results. So um, after I've seen the dog flea, I've, uh, I was immediately checking out also other specimens as well. And over here, I've got some. Um, this one you already know from last week. Okay, um, always zoom out again a little bit. Here, that is the Varroa mite, um, which um, I yeah from from um, yeah from a a uh, it's a, the, a parasite of of, um, of a bee. I need to kind of. Uh, it's a little bit disturbing that the the camera always readjusts its uh, exposure time okay but also here um, I was a little bit surprised positively surprised that it was able to see um, also not quite as well as as, uh, as in the dog flea but um, also here I was able to see those horizontal um, yeah, structures where I assume that maybe these could be some some muscles as well, but I don't know. It's not quite as clear as with uh, with the dog flea, but in any case here as well, um, it's possible to see that some parts uh, um, yeah of the specimen seem to interact with the polarized light. Yeah. So this is uh, something I just wanted to to show you. And last but not least, um, another thing here, and that is wood. It's also one of my favorite uh, specimens here, and. Uh, this wood over here always zoom out again uh, let's try to find the I'm also moving out of the <laughs> field of view so th that's the one there are actually three samples on this slide okay so let's uh, place on top yeah 
And uh, I think uh, here uh, the wood simply completely depolarizes the light and that's why it appears uh, yeah, bright on a dark uh, background. So again, this is not dark field, which produces somewhat of a similar effect of a bright uh, image on a dark background. But uh, this uh, wood here, the individual wood cell, uh, yeah, cells depolarize the light in such a way that it appears bright on a dark background. Yeah, I think it's also quite, uh, quite nice looking. Okay. So, um, insect wings are also very beautiful under polarized light, but I don't know how well it works with cross polarization. Okay, well, something to try out. Um, yeah, um, can can you see crystals vibrate under the microscope? Well, not vibrate, but I can actually show you in just a minute. Um, I want to show you how crystals actually form um, because I'll be yeah dissolving a little bit of um, aspirin under. Um, in some alcohol and the alcohol evaporates very quickly and therefore um, yeah you can actually see crystal growing in time lapse uh, the crystal growth can be observed very nicely yes um, a time lapse might be necessary if the crystals grow slowly but today I'm going to show you very fast growing crystals um, yeah because the alcohol that evaporates uh, will um, yeah cause the crystals to form very quickly yeah. If you do also one of you here does it look any interesting do they have maybe samples of lighter here? <laughs> Thank you for the question. You know what? I have no idea. I never observed here um, if I remember under polarized light. So what's the big problem? We just tried out. Okay, here's a little bit of hair. Um, I just put it here on a microscope slide. I, mean, not, I, I, don't, I won't even... Uh, three, four here. I won't even bother to, to put uh, water on here. Let's have a look. I don't know if I've got mostly black here. I see mostly because some of me here now starts to turn white <laughs> as well. I'm not the youngest anymore. Um, and let's uh, put a little bit of hair under the microscope. And uh, so this is not, yeah, he, here we go. And let's see what it happens. Oh. Okay. Let's turn it up a little bit, the light intensity. I mean, all of those white things that you see, that's of course dust. Yeah, have to maybe lots of dust and dirt. Maybe I'm going to zoom out a little bit too. Yeah, here is my hair. Here is th those little dark lines that you see. There is a, a quite a bit of latency in the camera. Yeah, so that's my hair. Um, and uh, let's let's go in. I mean, yeah, the camera uh, sees the image is too dark and starts to overexpose. Okay, yeah, but uh, I guess it's a question of fine tuning. And uh, because my hair is relatively dark anyway, uh, you might not, uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't see a strong effect. But what you see quite nicely is all the dust and the dirt, uh, yeah, which uh, becomes visible this way. Yeah? What about sugar crystals? Oh, I don't have sugar here right now anyway, but uh, it looks similar to salt, okay? When you referred to chirality, do you mean the polarization will take place for chiral molecules in most cases? A chiral molecule will not produce the effect? Uh, yeah, uh, so basically um, what you have is, is you have, um, as a matter of fact, I think this is how chirality was actually also discovered uh, yeah, some time ago, is, is that uh, if you use polarized light, and uh, I mean, I give, I give an example. Let's just use this one here. That you, what you have in the back, you see all of those, uh, all of those white dots here, the dust and the dirt, um, basically um, simply depolarizes the light. So it uh, the polarized light strikes uh, the the dust and it becomes depolarized and it goes out in all different directions again, and that's why we're able to see it. Uh, but if you um, have a very thin crystal of vitamin C, which is a so-called, uh, which contains, uh, which uh, is a uh, um, yeah, um, it has a, a so-called a chiral C atom. Then um, it will rotate the it will rotate the polarized light a certain degree, um, and uh, it will rotate the different wavelengths differently, um, and therefore the different colors are cancelled out differently by the analyzing filter. And for this reason, you get the colors. 
Okay, um, so this is a, a little bit uh, uh, the, the way that this works. So um, yeah, this was my hair. Now let's have now a look uh, at, uh, um, yeah, why don't we just uh, start to make a couple of crystals, I would say, okay? Uh, just for the fun of it, um, I already tried to make a few in the afternoon um, and it worked out, but uh, usually um, it's always nice to um, yeah, simply try it out uh, from scratch so that you know how this actually works. So what I have here, and again, this is not the first time that I'm doing this, so some of you have already been watching my live streams and some of my videos have already seen this before. Some of you may not. But what I've got here, this here is um, a little capsule of, of caffeine. So, and uh, this is, I uh, simply press out some of this uh, powder. This is not pure caffeine. Um, it, uh, if you read the ingredients, um, it al also contains uh, a lot of cellulose, which is some kind of a filling substance. I bought this, I don't know, it's just a, you know. um, again, I'm, I'm not eating caffeine. I just bought it for doing uh, some crazy experiments with water fleas because they do respond uh, to caffeine. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little bit of alcohol um, because the caffeine dissolves well in alcohol. It also dissolves in, in water, but the alcohol has the advantage that it evaporates much faster and therefore we're able to see the crystal growth uh, much better. So all I'm doing right now is I'm adding a little bit, let's move up here a little bit. I'm uh, adding a little bit of of, of, yeah, yeah, of alcohol and uh, I'm just going to wait uh, a minute or so for uh, the caffeine to dissolve. Um, but there will be still a lot of powder left because that is the cellulose filler, um, which is not the caffeine, obviously. And while it dissolves, I just want to show you because before I forget, I want to show you another source. Um, of polarizing filters, um, but they might not work, okay? So you know those uh, 3D glasses, okay? So they're pretty cheap and I bought a lot of them. Um, and they also have polarizing filters, but these are so-called circular polarizing filters and not linear polarizing filters. So those polarizing filters are different from those, uh, from, from those here, okay? And I just wanna show you why this is the case um, because um, if you turn it, and we have to see, uh, it's difficult to see, now it becomes dark, maybe okay. Now it becomes dark, and that's the way it should be. But if you turn one of them around here, um, then it won't get completely dark. Uh, you cannot see it quite well now, okay? And unfortunately, maybe I need some kind of a bright background for you to see this, okay? Yeah, you see, when I turn it, you it doesn't turn become black completely, but you have to turn it around here, and then you have the correct orientation, and then it becomes black. Yeah. Um, so this basically means that uh, you um, have essentially you need to you need a little bit more trial and error with those uh, polarizing glasses um, until you find the right uh, um, orientation. And uh, um, I've also had some polarizing glasses where it didn't work because there are different standards. I think uh, the standard here is called Real D or something like that, and this kind of works. Yeah. But uh, I, I would probably recommend before you do some experimentation with those polarizing glasses, get yourself simply some, some li a linear polarizing filter like this. Yeah, um, yeah simply because uh, it's also a little bit more stable yeah? um, and a little bit thicker than those here. Yeah. So I, I think it, it, that that's easier to use, but it is uh, possible also to use those. And I have done so in the past. Yeah? So um, I think uh, the... Yeah. It's now uh, dissolved and what I do now is, is I now tilt it a little bit uh, so that uh, um, the, the cellulose uh, can settle down um, to, to the ground and I will now take a, a slide, okay, I will now take a slide and uh, I will add a little bit of the liquid, um, yeah, of the alcohol um, and caffeine solution um, on top here. I'm going to use a fresh uh, pipette. Okay, and uh, what I have to do now is the following. I want, um, how am I going to put the, the analyzer on top? Because if I put it on top, it's going to touch the, it's going to touch the, 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 uh, yeah, the solution. I don't, I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it, uh, I'm going to put a, a Petri dish over it um, so that I have a, um, a spacer like this. Okay, so that's kind of the, the, the strategy that I'll be, uh, I'll be using. Yeah? So um, I'll be now, taking a, a small sample here from the top. Yeah, I, I will put it here. And what's gonna happen is, is because of the alcohol, alcohol has a very low surface tension, so it's going to spread very quickly across uh, the slide, which is fine. It's actually nice because it gives you a nice large, yeah, it gives you a nice large uh, 
Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put it under the stereo microscope again and we're going to see how this actually looks like. Okay. And then we're going to hope uh, for the best that um, essentially the concentration, I got the concentration correct. It's a little bit too bright again. Yeah. So maybe I'm going to go down, tune it down a bit. Okay. Of course, we're not able to see anything yet because the alcohol has not evaporated yet. This goes on top. Yeah. I'm going to now rotate everything here until it becomes dark. Okay. Now everything is pretty dark. We are able to see a couple of, uh, yeah, I would say, yeah, dust fibers. And and let's kind of hope that that it will start uh, to form, yeah, some crystals. Uh, maybe maybe it already starts to form. Ah, look here on the side, we already have some forming, so it's a little difficult to see. It's out of focus, but I, I just want to reassure you that it's already in process and it's not in focus. Yeah. So um, it's also on the other side, so I'm going to just leave it like this maybe. Um, and uh, oh, this goes fast. Okay. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Uh, it's the camera, it was, it's so low, because the latency of the camera, do you see that's why it looks kind of, uh, yeah, choppy? Yep, but it, it, this is how fast it goes, We're, the whole slide is already almost. So, that, that's why alcohol has a certain advantage. Uh, because uh, it evaporates so quickly that means you don't even have to do time lapse. Okay, uh, I, I, I kind of like this, so maybe we're just gonna try this again. Or you know what? Before we try it again, um, let's have a, a, a look at those crystals first. Okay, um, yeah. So, so that is uh, yeah. We can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, and you know what? I'm just gonna show it to you also on my compound microscope. Yeah. So this is now uh, 55 times magnified. Yeah. Yeah, and I uh, have to, I don't know. See, that's a little bit the problem here. I don't know how to move the whole thing. Ah, that, that's nice. Yeah. Again, th this is a little bit, uh, if you look through the, man, I tell you, if you look through the, uh, the actual stereo microscope, it looks so much better uh, because the, the contrast is better and the background is really black and the crystals, they really shine nicely. And you really cannot, uh, yeah, the quality over the camera is, is really not as good because the, the camera um, adjusts the exposure time and, and everything. So you're losing a lot in, in this process, but just looking through it really looks uh, very beautiful. Um, yeah, so, um, so e essentially, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice uh, thing to try out. Um, I'm going to show it to you now in my compound microscope because I do have a polarized light also on my compound microscope, obviously. And uh, for this reason, um, I'm going to yeah, try it there as well. And you're going to see that it does look nicer um, because, of course, uh, we have a higher, uh, better resolution. But um, I'm going to, but there is a problem, not a problem really, but uh, a limitation that I have here. Ah, look, it's kind of funny. Oh uh, yeah, the the other camera, the, <laughs> the other camera gave out just a second. The stage, the stage camera kind of, uh, I kind of lost the stage camera. So I'm going to restart it again. Yeah, now it works again. Okay, here we go. So let me try this here. Let me try this here. Okay, and this is how it looks like uh, because I have a um, polarized light as well, DIC, um, and I'm able to play around with the prism, but I'm not able to get it completely black, okay? Uh, but instead, um, I can change the background color. Yeah. So I'm going to go up a little bit here. Yeah. So let's turn up the light a little bit. Let's refocus. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you a little bit of um, how uh, how it looks different. Yeah. Yeah, let's go up a little bit, and if I turn, if I change, if I play around with the prism, then I'm able, yeah, to change the background uh, also a little bit. But I'm not able to get it completely black. Yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to to illustrate this a little bit of um, how how it looks different. Yeah. 
So I'm going to interrupt myself again. Um, so and then we're going to try this again because it was so fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks for the explanation. Yeah. So that was. Uh, yeah. I go down again. Um, I will. I'm simply going to skip down where you have this at micro pantry. It looks like these polarizer films from these glasses also use a quarter wave plate. Yes. The so-called quarter wave plate makes it a uh, circular polarizing. So that's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, th that's what you just said here, <laughs> like a circular polarizer for photography. Yeah? Uh, they too can't be reversed uh, and look similar. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, that's exactly the thing. Um, mm -hmm. um, this is awesome. A <laughs> real time capture. Yes. And uh, do solutions in alcohol and in water produce different shapes of crystals? Um, let's put it this way. Um, I'm going to give you now a very um, daring answer, yes and no. Uh, first of all, <laughs> as always, it depends a lot on the, on, the, on the actual substance in use, but indeed the speed of crystallization um, can essentially have an effect, but I, I probably would say it maybe depends also on the substance. So temperature can have an effect, impurities can have an effect on how the crystals look like, uh, the initial concentration can have an effect, um, because there's so many variables uh, involved, um, I would not be surprised if indeed um, yeah, the, the, so the solvent also has an effect. What I have done as well, especially with vitamin C, vitamin C does not dissolve very well in alcohol, but it dissolves well in water. And what I've done is I've uh, used an alcohol water mixture um, so that the, the alcohol makes uh, the liquid spread very nicely over the slide because it breaks the surface tension and the water um, is able to dissolve the vitamin C very well. So even that is something that I've tried out. In the past um, I got very ugly looking crystals uh, if I use too much of the vitamin C, for example if it's too thick and uh, sometimes the very thin crystals they look nicer so you see that um, yeah not only the solvent but maybe also the amount of, 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 of the substance also has an effect so I would say yeah, the answer is, is, is clearly yes but I would say it depends also on the on the substance that you're using okay so okay uh, I simply jumped over now I hope I didn't uh, yeah forget anything I simply jumped over now the 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 comments uh, did, which did not okay um, so and I'm gonna just uh, um, I'm going to just uh, try it again because it was simply so fun and then I'm going to show you some um, um, some um, aspirin as well. Okay. So why not try it again? Okay, get myself a slide. Sometimes the slides are a little bit dirty and I think that is okay um, because a little bit of the dirt uh, can act as a so-called crystallization seed. This is uh, uh, the place where crystals uh, start uh, to form. Okay. So um, I'm going to, for this, I'm going to go back again then to my stereo microscope because that's actually what the whole live stream today should be about. <laughs> yeah, but I, so let's try it again. Where is this? Here we go. I'm going to take again some liquid here from the top on here. Uh, I'll use two drops. Yeah, and uh, what's gonna happen is, is it's, it's going to start spreading or I'm going to just spread it a little bit myself. Okay, and then let's see what, what happens, okay? So uh, let me quickly put it under the microscope again. Okay, I have to change over. I have to deactivate and activate. Let's put it here. Um, this one goes on top. This one goes on top. I'm going to rotate it until it's black. And we're just gonna wait, I guess, okay? And uh, maybe we're able to see after a couple of minutes or after a minute or so, maybe we're able to see um, again the crystals forming. I already see that a little bit is starting to happen on, on, the, on the side. Um, but because I, of course, uh, something that you might not want to forget about it is because, um, yeah, I put a, a Petri dish um, on top. Um, yeah, it might not evaporate quite as quickly um, as without Petri dish, okay? So if there's a little bit of wind, for example. Okay. Let's see how this actually works. Okay, and in the meantime, in the meantime, I'm gonna go again over here. Citric acid dissolves very well in IPA, just in case you wanna try. Um, citric acid, I did not 
um, I've tried before and I've done the following. I've molten the citric acid over a heat. Um, and then um, it also starts to crystallize, but it takes a day or two days for the crystals to grow then. Okay, so um, um, it, citric acid, um, yeah, which um, um, it also makes very nice crystals. Yeah? Um, so, so another question, I imagine if you add some alcohol to common garden soil, you would get all kinds of crystals from the nutrients like potassium and some trace elements if they dissolve. Um, what I would guess is the following is, is if you add some solvent, any solvent, let's say, or alcohol to garden soil, um, what you're going to get is you, it's going to wash out a lot of different substances, um, as you said, like for example, potassium and so on, trace elements. But if it is not pure, then it could be maybe that you do not get very nice crystals. Um, so I found the best solution always. So you'd have to probably purify it first. Uh, so that you're able to crystallize it out nicely, yeah? because sometimes if there are mixes of mixes of, of of substances, maybe then it could be that maybe it, the the substances they don't crystallize quite as nicely. Okay, I'm a little bit hmm, this is a kind of interesting demonstration effect because for whatever reason, ah, uh, mm -hmm. there's a little bit maybe forming here on the side. Let me. Uh, let me see. Um, I'm going to try the following because it's too difficult for me to actually move uh, the um, the slide. I will therefore put it on a another petri dish so I can move the petri dish, and I'll put this petri dish on top. I need, no, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to put the smaller one on top like this. I need to rotate it until it is black. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, and it already crystallized. So while I was doing this, uh, it already started to crystallize. I can't believe it. It was so fast. Here we are. Okay. <laughs> okay. It, this was almost in an instant. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try it again. Okay, um, quite easy. I'm going to take a little bit of the, the alcohol solution and I'm going to now drop it directly on the slide. Okay, so it's going to dissolve now. Okay, you see it's dissolving. Let's turn up the light a little bit. The camera is very slow, that's why you're able, yeah, it's only a USB 2 camera and I've got so many cameras connected that uh, yeah, the computer has some processing problems. And uh, we're going to leave, I'm now not going to touch it. I'm going to just make it dark. Okay, and we're just going to I'm going to turn it down a little bit and I'm just going to be patient now and uh, I'm going to wait for it to crystallize out. Okay, let's see what happens. It was really fast uh, because uh, when I was actually putting the slide on the on, on the petri dish this is when boom all of a sudden um, it started to crystallize and I think because the movement of the slide and the air and the wind um, caused the, the, an increase in the evaporation and therefore uh, yeah maybe you are able to see if I turn on the if I turn on the arrow here uh, maybe, maybe you're, I don't know if you're able to see this um, over here on the side it's a little bit white the slide um, and in the center it's uh, yeah it's still a uh, liquid yeah? but I see that it's now starting to slowly to crystallize I'm not going to touch it now. I just have to be patient. But I see that it's slowly starting to move in uh, from from the side, and then, uh, and then it might go go quick. Okay, so I'm I'm going to wait a minute or so because I don't want to miss the point now. Let's wait, let's wait. It could also be, and that's also something that has to be, uh, you have to keep in mind is, is that the alcohol and also the, the substance, um, they um, also attract moisture from the air. And uh, this can also kind of delay a little bit the crystallization as, uh, as the moisture from the air starts to uh, be soaked up uh, by the substance. Okay. Yeah.
I'm, I'm, I'm waiting now. I'm not going to touch this. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the, um, uh, to the, to the, to the chat. Okay, uh, but there are no comments uh, uh, for me right now. Okay, which uh, and it, ah, it makes it so much easier now if you um, actually mention um, yeah my name here. Why? Why does it? It's kind of interesting now. Now it takes again much longer. But I'm not going to touch this because I actually want to see it again. But again, it could be maybe that uh, because uh, um, I put a, a petri dish uh, over um, over the slide, it, um, yeah, the 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 air beneath the petri dish becomes saturated with alcohol, and therefore it uh, takes a longer time uh, for the crystals to form. We we'll see something seems to be happening now, so I'm not going to touch this. Uh, when you were in school, what was your favorite subject besides microbiology? Um, <laughs> that's an interesting one, yeah. Uh, when I was in school, in high school, um, I liked, bi indeed, I, I liked biology a lot. I was very much into the sciences. Um, so we did not do a lot of microbiology in school because that is a little bit specific and specialized already. Okay. Um, yeah, look, something's happening, something's happening, something's happening. Okay, the crystals are still very fine. Okay. Yeah, it's still I still see that uh, I still see it's not completely dry. So maybe, I don't know, it's uh, it's very slow. Let's, uh, I'm going to carefully now move move it down. Maybe there's a little bit more happening over here. Yeah, you see over here, it's already started to crystallize. It's, it's a little bit out of focus. Hmm. It's kind of strange. Why this? I wonder why this is taking so much. Let's have a look here at the edge. Ah, crystallization stopped here. So this is what you call the demonstration effect. For whatever reason, it's not uh, experiments are not always entirely reproducible. For whatever reason, ah, it's kind of interesting. Um, I'm I'm now going I'm going to aerate the whole thing now a little bit. Weird. <laughs> That's because I do still see that it's a little bit moist still, but it maybe I don't know. Maybe could it be that uh, somehow the solvent kind of flushed all of the substance to the side? I don't know about that. Yeah, but uh, in any case. Well, oh, hmm, strange. Yeah, I mean, it, there is a very thin film of crystals now um, on the surface, but by far not as much as I, I was kind of hoping for. Hmm, strange. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm, I'm not actually, I have to tell you, I'm a little bit. Um, I, I really want to know now. <laughs> I'm going to try this again. <laughs> Okay, why are they tangling? Did I see it wrong? What do you mean with tangling? I, I'm not familiar with this vocabulary word, unfortunately. Maybe you can explain this a little bit. Um, okay, there's a comment here. Why are they tangling? Unfortunately, I'm not quite familiar with this word. So, I'm going to put it here again. And So, let's try. And then I would like uh, to show you some, uh, let's to try the whole thing with, uh, with aspirin. Winding together. Uh, what are you, may, I, may I ask, what are you referring to with winding together? 
you mean uh, you mean the crystals or 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 I'm a little bit uh, lost uh, for context uh, right now okay um, yeah or oh, tangling to be to entang entangle something is this what you mean yeah B but specifically what are you referring to here okay um yeah so let let me let's uh, wait for this one here and in in the meantime um i would like to prepare now um some um yeah some um, some aspirin um the aspirin crystals again uh, yeah um look uh, uh intertwined you mean you mean the crystals why they, uh, yeah okay yes i i get it now the question is is now why are the crystals of uh, essentially what happens is, is that there is a so-called a crystallization start uh, where the first molecules they start to arrange uh, with each other and from there they start growing into one direction and now if there is somewhere else another crystal growing into a different direction then it will cross it they will cross each other okay um so um essentially it's it's indeed some kind of like an overlap um an overlap of crystals that you have here yeah? um that's what we have here yeah um it's an overlap of of crystals so let's let's see here again this is kind of uh, yeah yeah we have here you know what let me see this here I'm going to move this a little bit. Okay, so I got the edge now. We have again crystal growth happening. Uh, again, the <laughs> the contrast is not very good, and that has to do with the camera exposure. But at least you see that the crystal growth happens uh, quite quickly now. So, so what we do? What do we learn from this? Uh, evidently, it's better to always start uh, from a fresh slide. <laughs> Focus again. Yep, here we go. Okay. So uh, I'm going to now try something very quickly. I'm going to now move over, and I'm going as uh, until it's as long as it's uh, n still not completely crystallized out. Let's have a look here under the microscope. H here, this one is in focus, and let's see. Yep, that's now under the compound microscope crystallization. Yeah. Yep, and I think <laughs> Yeah, it's finished again. It was very quick. Yeah, yeah but uh, for example, here you see it quite nicely. Uh, let's turn on the arrow again that usually um, here in the center if there's some kind of an impurity a little bit of dust or dirt This is where crystallization starts and then it starts to radiate outwards. Yeah, um, and uh, sometimes these impurities or crystallization seeds are quite uh, relevant for crystallization even to start Okay, so yeah, so this is um, basically how it looks like under the compound microscope. Yeah um, so uh, some people are asking hello what are we looking at well uh, today i'm uh, putting some crystals under the microscope again some polarized light um and uh, I, i'm most of, most of the time i'm using my stereo microscope for this so let's uh, try some aspirin now um yeah so where is the desk view uh, how does it look like under bright field only okay 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 uh, thank you for the comment um so this one here is now using uh, DIC, using polarized light. So on the bright field, it looks like this. Okay. Uh, so we don't have uh, yeah as much um, as many colors here. I think it also looks nice, but uh, yeah. But usually crystals look uh, look uh, 
especially beautiful under polarized light. Yeah? But that is bright field now. Okay. So, um, so what I'm going to, uh, can you zoom into the max? Okay, so um, I, I, I will do that, fine. Um, so this one here is now 10 times uh, objective, um, 20 times objective. Let me always uh, keep on readjusting everything here. 40 times uh, objective. Um, yeah, I need to t open up a little bit more the light. I need to refocus here. So that's uh, not that's uh, under my compound microscope. Okay, um, 60 times and 100 times oil immersion without oil. Okay, so that is now the maximum, and you can see that. It looks very blurry. Why? Because I did not use any immersion oil. But let's open the condenser a little bit for more brightness. So that is now the maximum uh, that I'm able to get yeah, using my compound microscope. Yeah. So yeah, playing around again a little bit with the, the yeah, with the prism here. I like modern monochrome art. Yeah, that's what I also like to do here. Sometimes crystals indeed are, um, yeah, are very artistic. So I essentially, yeah, um, also uh, put up pictures on my <laughs> wall. <laughs> uh, so hi, I'm experimenting with polarized light, but I'm using a ruler over the polarizing filter, and it makes uh, DSC similar rainbow colors. You can find a video about it on my channel. Yes, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you use plastic. Um, the rulers or any plastic objects uh, then under polarized light then uh, because the plastic will depolarize it it will give uh, a nice uh, nice color okay that's actually also something I might want to try out thank you for your response to my requests can you use 60 times in bright field I'm going to now show you everything in bright field so that's now in DIC bright field okay uh, 100 times I mean okay you see it in the corner right 60 times bright field a little bit too bright the bright field I need to refocus okay so that's 60 times um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you a little bit something which you might not know um, my 60 times objective has a so-called an adjustment ring to compensate for the thickness of the cover glass so I'm able to turn this little wheel here um, until I'm getting the maximum clarity yeah, for the 60 times objective. Yeah, this is a, a an adjustment for cover glass thickness. Okay, I think that's fine. So 40 times bright field. Uh, these are caffeine crystals for those of you who just joined in. 20 times bright field. I'm go down with the intensity. 10 times bright field. And four times bright field and you're going to see that the, the whole thing is in a circle because you need to swing out the condenser and then you have the full field of view again look look in the corner what happens here where the arrow is okay look yeah it's the condenser that I can yeah swing out and then you get the full field um, of view yeah so just uh, in case you were wondering okay um, so uh, do I see some coloration under the 100 times bright field? Interesting. Okay, are you see some coloration on the 100 times bright field? You know what you're referring to? Are you seeing, seeing is this, could this be some kind of chromatic aberration then? Um, yeah, let me see. There shouldn't be any coloration. If there is coloration uh, colors, then this uh, could be yeah, indeed a little bit here it could be um, it does not necessarily have to be chromatic aberration but sometimes those crystals also act like prisms and they split up the light um, as well so this could also be a reason why there might be a little bit on the edges some color not because my objectives are uh, semi apochromatic objectives so they are pretty color corrected already so any colors that you might see residual colors you might see might I'm just guessing might be also because of uh, the crystals uh, uh, acting like prisms uh, to split up the light into the different colors. I'm just guessing here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do skin cells show a polarized effect if you scrape your face skin with the fingernails a bit and put it on the slide? Um, 
something I want to try out maybe. Um, the question is, I don't have tape here with me, unfortunately. Um, so how am I going to do that? Um, okay, um, that's uh, one of the purposes of a live stream is, is to actually uh, try out things that I did not plan to do. So the idea is now how I'm going to get some skin cells off. Okay, so look, this is the way it works. You take a uh, slide and you scrap some skin cells off, hoping I don't see any. <laughs> yeah, maybe here. If not, then I might actually take some, some cheek cells from the inside. I don't see any. I don't see a lot here. Okay. Hmm. Let me try again. So let's... Uh, there could be a few. Um, if there are a few, then this might be enough. Let me quickly check um, if there are some. Um, I do have some house dust, which I also want to, to look at, and uh, there are actually quite a few skin cells there. I don't know if, um, I, don't, if I don't see a lot here. I wonder if these uh, things are skin cells. Um, you, uh, you need actually much more. I mean, there is a little bit of stuff here. Uh, maybe some here. I mean, not very, not very uh, interesting. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to try it in any case um, by not using skin cells, but by using cheek cells. And look what I'm doing now is uh, going to simply, as you have already seen this before already, um, I'm going to do the desk view again. So let's see if uh, body cells are polarizing or not. Okay, a cotton swab. Collecting cells. Okay, and we're gonna streak it. And I'm gonna trash this here. And uh, I'm going to simply look at it first uh, under the regular compound microscope, we need to uh, make sure that uh, there are plenty of them visible. Where are they? Yeah, here, here they are, okay? So um, these are all, um, yeah, my, uh, my cheek cells from, the, um, from my mouth. Um, very in DIC, um, I mean, you've seen them already before, if you know my live stream, the cheek cell in the center here, you've got the nuclei, two of them sticking together, clustered together. And uh, what I'm uh, if you want to collect skin cells uh, from, from your body, I think it's much easier to use sticky tape. But then the problem with the sticky tape is, is cellophane tape is that it's also polarizing. <laughs> so it might not be uh, you know, always work always well. I'm a little bit concerned that uh, I'm not, I might not be able to see them very well using my stereo microscope because they are kind of small, okay? So um, the results might not be uh, might not be very good okay so but i'm going to try it in any case because i think yeah let me see yeah that's very let me quickly have a look here uh very difficult to to see they're very small let me just a second. I'll be honest with you, I do not see any of them. Oh, I do see a very, very weakly. Hmm. Yeah. Um, if no, um, if they were polarizing. See, these might be some of them here. Then they should actually properly shine up uh, brightly. So, no. I think uh, we can exclude this. What is this here? This bright thing here. 
it's on a different plane that's a dust fiber or a textile fiber yeah so um, in short to answer your question um, human skin cells or cheek cells or epithelial cells yeah they don't give me this effect I mean look here maybe again those gray dark spots that you see nah okay I think uh, we can conclude that uh, yeah they're not very suitable for polarizing microscopy okay um, yeah so um, yeah so yeah good point about the prism effect of the crystal itself that was a guess okay try for dandruff oh, that could be possible okay uh, I read about the Sanderson prisms but it's challenging to make strong enough frame case okay I cannot say much about those unfortunately uh, I got some water samples okay let the water sample sit for a few days yes so there is again some communication in the, yeah I jump down okay so uh, what I'm gonna do now is the following um, yeah I think yeah I wanted to try aspirin what time is it now oh it's one hour ten minutes already um, because I do want to show you some dust and some aspirin dust is actually quite nice to look at under the microscope but let's do the aspirin first um, I need to explain this a little bit um, again where I got it from because again I'm not uh, using aspirin tablets but I bought myself many 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 years ago yeah uh, some pure uh, salicylic acid yeah and uh, this is uh, not uh, f intended for consumption because it's a uh, pure crystalline form so you don't know about the dosage uh, that you're supposed to take um, yeah and uh, I was able to obtain this here they asked what do you need it for um, because normally you don't buy this stuff and um, essentially said I need it for microscopy because I want to look at crystals and so this is how it looks like it looks uh, very much like like salt okay um, or or sugar and we're just going to look at it directly under the microscope like this um, and uh, let me have a look and then I'm going to start to try to grow them um, on a slide just like we did with the vitamin C and uh, here we go see again I have to focus yeah and this is how no this is the wrong one this is the salt I uh, just realized always label always label your always label your your <laughs> your jars this is the salt here this here is the, the the yeah it's much finer this here is the the yeah the aspirin yeah so let's uh, zoom out a little bit yeah so you see these are just basically like like little grains here yeah nothing nothing special um, but um, I'd like to to grow them again on a microscope slide and um, I'm going to do the following again I'm going to simply um, dissolve them in a little bit of alcohol in the same procedure as before so um, I need a blank slide here um, I need a new tip so I'm going to throw this one away give me a new tip and I'm going to add again a little bit of alcohol where is my alcohol here okay and uh, okay and we're going to wait again um, a couple of minutes and uh, to allow it to dissolve a little bit and then let's have a look how those aspirin crystals look like it's slowly starting to dissolve and uh, yeah let's let's try the same thing I don't mind if I uh, also um, get some of the non-dissolved crystals that's fine because they might look nice as well and uh, let's quickly put it again under the microscope here and I uh, stereoscope we want to have let's see if I need to okay let's see it found it um, where is it yeah here here are some of those crystals they are not dissolved yet 
maybe adjust the light a little bit here yeah the exposure time is a little bit slow and let's uh, wait for the alcohol again uh, to dissolve mm -hmm. and uh, let's see um, how this actually works um, usually what happens is that uh, because of the low surface uh, tension of the alcohol it will spread over the slide first and then there's a larger surface area the alcohol will evaporate and then this is when the crystals uh, starts to grow again you see now that the crystals are kind of round in shape and the reason is because they, al they already started to dissolve they cannot dissolve further because the solution already seems to be quite saturated okay but uh, let's be again a little bit patient I mean I tried everything already out uh, in the afternoon and uh, so I know that this should work but it's maybe only a question of, of time a little bit yeah, until yeah. and uh, I assume that maybe that some of these crystals might act actually act as crystallization seeds so let's see how this now works okay so let's uh, have again a look uh, um, here um, one of the last questions how about ice crystals from your freezer might be difficult before they melt as a matter of fact this is uh, possible it is possible to put snow under the microscope and yes I have already done that and uh, what you um, and I did make videos on my uh, as, as a matter of fact on this channel go back a few months ago I think I made one or two videos on how to actually put ice crystals uh, snowflakes as a matter of fact under the microscope what you have to do is is you do not observe the snowflakes directly but rather the impression that the snowflakes make on clear nail polish so what you do is, is you take a microscope slide and you uh, put some ice cold clear nail polish over it and you uh, catch some snowflakes and the snowflakes will make an impression on the clear nail polish and when the clear nail polish dries you have an impression of the snowflake and then you take uh, the basically the, the the impression and put it under the microscope yeah? so you do not really put the, the the frozen water the ice crystal itself but rather the impression so you can make a permanent slide of, of, of snowflakes in other words yeah? it's possible um, and it works yeah? uh, again you need patience because not all snowflakes look equally nice I made a video of this yeah? um, so um, yeah snowflakes um, actually are, are quite uh, quite possible okay so um, I'm going down here again please could you do a review of the Zivboni microscope I don't have this microscope okay uh, so um, but what I can recommend generally is is that uh, many microscopes uh, concerning the features are very similar anyway so um, usually um, in a certain price category there are not so many differences and if you just look for the microscope which has uh, certain features that you like then you'll be in most cases it'll be fine yeah? uh, there is not so there can be not be so much variation within microscopes I mean you, it's, it's got to have a condenser it has the uh, the objectives of course uh, some of obje objectives are better than others but most for most microscopes uh, you essentially they're relatively similar okay so the um yeah okay um is, is there crystallization happening now or not okay mm -hmm. why not uh -huh. that's kind of interesting again so there's always this demonstration effect that uh, oh, maybe here on, on the side look look there's something happening here on the side look 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 here 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 we go real time that that's fast again so this is aspirin again the, it's kind of choppy because the camera is kind of slow okay but it's it's going yeah so it, it's a relatively fast crystallization process here we go again yeah the, the flashing that you see here is is the camera kind of adjusting its uh, exposure yeah, yeah this <laughs> and the slides finished 
<laughs> it's that fast yeah um, and maybe just for the fun of it okay uh, maybe we uh, just try the whole thing again and I would like to see this now under my compound microscope because I still have a, some solution left over where did I put it where did I put it I don't even ah this must be this one over here um, and uh, I'm going to put some of the uh, aspirin solution now on here and uh, now let's have a, simply for the fun of it, uh, let's have a look at this under the compound microscope. Again, we have to be a little bit patient here. Ah, look, these are crystals which are just dissolving. That's why they're so round. Huh, looks nice. Okay, that's aspirin in alcohol. So they, they kind of lose their uh, yeah, their sharp edges um, as they dissolve. And uh, this is now in polarized light in DIC without cover glass. And let's see if it starts to form. You see actually some of the alcohol disappearing. And 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 is this it no can't be uh, let's just wait let's go down a little bit with the magnification uh, but I don't have polarization here now uh, ah here we go here it is here it is look this is so fast This is incredibly fast <laughs> and finished. <laughs> Maybe over here, just a second. I see some. Here we go. So of course you see that the camera is much faster. I'm getting a much more smoother. Yep, and the slide is 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 finished. <laughs> okay, so this is uh yeah yeah. Yeah, this is basically, I uh, was a little bit too bright maybe, yeah. And uh, again here, um, every time uh, every time when you see the center of uh, here, this is where the crystallization started. Yeah? And then it kind of starts to crystallize outwards until adjacent crystals uh, start to meet, uh, meet each other. Yeah? And that's why you have those borders here. Yeah? <laughs> okay, so this was just a, yeah. Uh, just some fun here that we had. Um, so last but not least, there's a last. Uh, what about starch grains? Oh, I forgot about the starch grains. Okay, <laughs> forgot about the starch grains. Um, yeah, then let's do the starch grains and very quickly the starch grains and the um, and the dust. Okay, and then I'm going to call it quits for today. Uh, okay, so the five minutes starch grains, five minutes dust. I got carried away here a little bit, and. Um, I'm going to do now the following. Um, we're going to switch over to the desk. Honestly, uh, this is something I have not tried yet. I have not looked at starch grains yet under a stereo microscope. So I do not know um, whether the size uh, and the magnification is, is right or not. I don't know. We're just going to give it a try. Um, I'm going to do the following now. We need a little bit of water here, a little bit of water here. I'm going to put a tissue paper beneath it. This is high, I love improvisation here. So let's put it here on, on some tissue paper. Let's uh, rearrange the camera here. Um, over here, a potato. Okay. And you already know how this works. Okay. And we're finished. Um, cover glass goes on top. I'm going to use a large cover glass today. Uh, it's a little dirty. Who cares? Um, any excess uh, liquid will be removed. Okay, any excess liquid will be removed. Starch grains are normally re uh, are one of those standard things that you want to look at under the, with a polarization. Uh, yeah, filter. So let's uh, yeah, let's remove any. Look at. Uh, I'm really doing this very sloppily, but it doesn't matter. 
Let me see. Uh, I think this should it should work out. So let's give it a try. Let's try the regular microscope view first, uh, so that we see what we have to expect. Yeah, and uh, where are they? Here they are. These are my starch grains as we know and love them. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, here here they are. Let's do different, yeah. So now let's try those uh, with a stereo microscope. And that is going to be uh, interesting uh, because you do actually need a higher magnification for those. But maybe it will work out and that's why I, I would like to figure this out uh, if this is actually possible. So let's put it here again on here and starch grains under polarized light. Ha! Actually, yeah, here, here they are. See, they're kind, they're kind of tiny, so let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Ah, this actually works. Let's focus. Yeah, it's still tiny. Let's go up a bit further. Um, let's turn up the light intensity a little bit. And let's carefully refocus them yeah yeah I can't get it any more clear yep but here they are okay uh, so I can conclude starch grains uh, also work with a stereo microscope um, you know um, the magnification is of course uh, not high enough to make them any much bigger but you can actually see them yeah. and uh, yeah of course, you want to make sure that yeah, the polarization filters are properly crossed so that the background is dark. So that is basically something I highly recommend that you try out, okay? Because uh, there it's kind of easy to, to do, okay? Uh, so some comments here. Uh, success! Uh, the round of real-time capture is even better. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, what would you need to do to preserve those slides with crystals? Ah, yes. <laughs> that 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 that's uh, that's another thing. Um, can you make a permanent slide of crystals? And the short answer is yes. But you have to use either a so-called a dry mount. That basically means no liquid mounting medium or a mounting medium which does not dissolve the crystals okay and that might be a little bit difficult um, so for example if you have a uh, crystals that dissolve well in water you might uh, use a very hydrophobic resin based mounting medium um, so that is uh, yeah otherwise they're gonna it's gonna dissolve the crystals so that's kind of risky a little bit so what I would probably suggest is is that um, and this actually does work um, is, is you make yeah like for example you have have your crystal slides here let me go here again the desk view okay and uh, I, I know this is gonna be sound crazy but actually this is what you call a dry mount you take yourself a a cover glass I've got those gigantic cover glasses yeah you put it over and you simply yes you simply tape them down um, on, on the edges yeah um, so um, essentially the the crystal is surrounded by ear and that's going to be fine uh, because uh, when we look at uh, it under the microscope uh, then it's also surrounded by air and uh, at low magnifications you don't need a mounting medium anyway um, yeah so um, that's um, and maybe sometimes even the difference in refractive index from the crystals to the air is actually something that you might want anyway if it's again surrounded by some kind of a uh, a mounting medium that has again a different refractive index or a, a one that's similar to the crystals you might not be able to see it as well so what I would suggest is either use a mounting medium which is uh, does not dissolve the the crystals and there is no standard solution for this but it's simply something that uh, depends on the crystal or uh, as a general purpose solution is, is you just make a dry mount where you just use some tape and, and glue a cover glass um, on top um, for protecting the crystal yeah so that's uh, simply simply something I, I recommend I've done this by the way already before and uh, I've kept some of the crystals uh, quite some time yeah um, so this was uh, um, a question here and uh, let me go down again quick 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 I hope I'm uh, uh, 
Have you heard of a Zamzam water? They appear to have lots of different kinds of minerals. It could be pretty things to see under the micro, micro, microscope. Um, I mean, I don't know of some some water, but if you want to crystallize out mineral water, it's probably not going to work so easily because still the concentration of those minerals is way too low. I mean, there might be a lot of minerals in there, and it might be healthy for you, but uh, they are present in, in very small amounts. And if you want to make crystals, you need actually quite a large amount of of, of, of substance. So this is, I, I think, uh, yeah, uh, something where I, I say it might might not work. Okay. So last thing that I would like to try is um, I'm going to um, put some dust under the microscope because dust looks nice most of the time. Um, and uh, again, uh, I'm going to show you how this can be done. Also under polarized light, the dust looks quite nice. And what, how does this work? You take uh, some, I found behind my desk, I found some house dust. Look at this, this is uh, just regular dust. And you need tweezers. And what you do next is the following. Um, you simply grab yourself some of this dust and you tap it. Um, you see that there are lots of fibers on the dust, uh, lots of skin cells. Ha, here we go with the skin cells, but also uh, lots of fibers uh, from clothing, for example. Yeah? And some of the fibers are synthetic. Um, and and, uh, yeah. and uh, in order to protect everything a little bit, uh, because otherwise the dust is going to be blown away, I simply add a, a cover glass. Uh, without any water, without any mounting medium or anything, just uh, like this, uh, so that uh, you know, it's a little bit pressed flat and protected. And stereo microscope again, and let's take it out. It goes here again, place it on top, and I will place the thing here over it, and we rotate, and uh, maybe a little bit more light, yeah. And uh, let's zoom out a little bit. And this is basically what we see. And uh, why I like to observe dust uh, is under the microscope because you can occasionally find some interesting things. You can not only find the different uh, um, textile fibers, but occasionally uh, you're also able to find uh, scales of, of butterflies and, and other interesting things as, as, as well. But uh, those uh, fibers, synthetic fibers, are actually very prominent, okay? Yeah, so, for example, the blue fibers that you see over here. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's basically. Um, yeah. But some of the particles I see are, are relatively uh, small, and I also have to say the following. I mean, um, again, this is more a question of camera uh, and not so much of the microscope. The the image clarity is not very high. Uh, if I look through the microscope, I see a very very crisp image. Okay. So um, it's a little bit, uh, I think, a camera thing that uh, yeah, I'm dealing here with. Yeah, yeah. But um, again, all of those substances are depolarizing the light, and therefore um, they um, appear to be bright on a dark uh, background. Okay. Yeah. Have you found a dust mite? No, I have not. Uh, not found a dust mite yet. Okay. Um, oh, keyboard. The keyboard is not so. The keyboard um, actually is not so uh, old. So I don't know if there are a lot of uh, somebody requested. I put some collect some some stuff and dirt from my keyboard. I will tell you the keyboard is not that old, but uh, why not give it a try? Mm. Almost nothing because it's a fairly new keyboard. No, nothing. Okay. <laughs> so unfortunately, yeah. But essentially, it will probably look. Uh, it will probably look similar um, um, as here. But uh, for comparison, um, I'm going to now put it under my my other microscope again, and uh, we're going to. Uh -huh. I'm going to put it under my other microscope again, and we're going to have a look at this here now, which is also in polarized light. Is there now some? Okay. Why? Ah, here, here we go. And maybe we want to go down a little bit with the magnification. Yeah, and this is how it looks like. Yeah. So we see that. Uh, yeah. 
and then you can go for for some observation and you can try to find yeah for example these flat structures that you see over here yeah um, most likely skin cells skin is very very common in house dust okay yeah. lots of fibers again yeah. Um, today, when I looked at it, I, I did find also some, some butterfly scales and other interesting things as well. Yeah? But uh, um, I just want to show you again. Let's try it again in, maybe there where it's a little bit more dense in the stereoscope. Okay. Yeah. Yes, let me see. Yeah. So again, I think uh, I have already now like, some kind of a new motivation to kind of figure out a better camera solution for this microscope here. Um, now that I also have it standing next uh, to my other microscope, I'm not quite as happy. And it's not the camera alone which is the problem, but it keeps on readjusting uh, the exposure, so I have to go manual. Um, and if I go manual, however, then um, I have to also keep on readjusting the exposure when I change the when I exchange the magnification. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically. Yeah. yeah let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, this kind of house dust um, under the microscope. Okay. So. Um, yeah, um, I, I think uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Maybe a leg from a carpet beetle, if I have one. You don't want to have carpet beetles <laughs> in your home. Yeah? Uh, and uh, yeah, what? Yeah, can you buy dust mite on a commercial slide? Uh, I'm quite sure it should be possible. I don't have one at dust mites, uh, but uh, this uh, should be possible. I mean, uh, in my water samples, I find quite a few mites. <laughs> so it's uh, finding mites is not so difficult, but a dust mite I've not found yet. Maybe I've not been looking enough for it yet. Oh my gosh, one hour thirty six minutes, people. Um, yeah, I'm glad that the live stream worked out technically. For those of you who joined in later a little bit, I had some technical problems at the beginning. <laughs> some uh, some of my the cameras didn't work and the computer crashed <laughs> uh, but uh, um, I think I'm going to leave it at that I hope that this kind of motivated you again to do a little bit of uh, experimentation I do want to remind you that we're celebrating 300 years of hobby microscopy okay um, 300 years um, yeah and my suggestion is or I would like to invite you if you have a YouTube channel or even if you don't uh, why don't you just share your knowledge and images and just add this hashtag and then uh, we're able to find uh, your videos or whatever you've uh, created okay um, it's simply a very decentralized it's a very decentralized uh, project okay um, so let's celebrate 300 years of, of hobby and amateur microscopy or general microscopy yeah because the guy here he uh, Anthony van Leeuwenhoek uh, he basically uh, passed away in 1723 yeah? so it's uh, 300 years yeah? um, so um, yeah, I wish you all the best. Uh, um, yeah, I'm going to. I'm working now uh, for this channel also on some more videos. Uh, you've probably seen that I have not uploaded quite a lot in the previous weeks, uh, but uh, I will keep on now uploading a few more videos. Um, I also do have uh, another channel called Micro Hunter Microscopy, where I do a lot of uh, microscope reviews. Um, so I keep on posting uh, some microscope reviews as well, and I will also post a microscope review of the microscope, the stereo microscope that I'm using here right now. I'm currently working on, on this. Yeah, um, I wish you all the best. I hope you liked it. See you again next week. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll think of a, a new topic again uh, for next week. Enough for today. Have a nice weekend. Uh, happy microbe hunting, uh, everyone, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.